Tune into this week's Xamarin Show where I have my good friend Steve on telling us how we can take Swift and turn it into C Sharp and back and forth again. So tune in. Welcome back, everyone, to The Xamarin Show. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and today I have one of my favorite people in the entire world, Steve on. How's it going, Steve? Hey, it's going great. Thanks, James. I'm really happy to be here today. I'm super happy to have you. In fact, you know, what's really cool is that um, I created a new form and I did some automation, and you were the first person to actually fill out my form to get onto the show internally. So I'm really happy that somebody reads my messages on Teams. Well, you know what? I'm a natural form filler, so how could I resist? <laughs> I know. They're so easy. It makes sense. They like, tell you what to fill in, and you just do it. Now we're here together. I know. Awesome. <laughs> so, Steve, um, this is the first time on the Xamarin Show. I know that you've been working on some cool stuff. Maybe you want to give everyone a little 30-second pitch on who, Steve, what you've been working on? Absolutely. So I'm working on a product called Binding Tools for Swift, and the... Uh, the big goal for this is to be able to take any Swift uh, library that's been compiled, analyze it, and surface it into C Sharp. So it feels like you're working in C Sharp instead of in Swift. And that way we can interoperate with anything new that comes down the pike from, from Apple. Very cool. Yeah, I know we've talked a lot in the past about Objective-C and even doing heading binder bindings or going reverse, taking Swift and going back to Objective-C and forward. So here is just... I have a Swift library. It can happen. It can work. Is this the thing? Yeah. They, the whole idea is to to try and cut out that through object, Objective-C step to make it work as automatically as possible. Right now, even when you're binding Objective-C, there's some intermediate steps and things you need to do to kind of adjust it. But we get much more information this way. And hopefully, we'll be giving a truer binding that requires I'm hoping for no extra post-processing by uh, the coder. Oh, very cool. I like that a lot. I know a lot of times there's like that, we call it the massaging of the API. They got to pretty it up a little bit. And I know the team does a lot of that when like iOS 14 and iOS 13, when all these new versions come out, there's a lot of automated work, but then a lot of manual process. I know as a, an app developer, me, I just want to say do it and have it work. So I'm excited to see what you have to show us today. Excellent. Uh, should we get into it? Yeah, let's go ahead and let's let's get okay. your screen up. Okay, so here we are looking at some code that I wrote the other day. I was feeling kind of hungry when I wrote this, so I put together a little bit of Swift that would like let me make sandwiches. So a sandwich, well, you'll get a lot of semiotic arguments about this, but in a sandwich consists of really sort of a bread and a filling. So I made protocols to define both of those. And then under that, I implemented those protocols as structures. So I've got rye bread and ham as a filling. And then I have this top level function here uh, called print sandwich, which will uh, print out the contents of your sandwich. It's very, very simple. Okay, um, so so before we even go further, because Swift may even be a little bit newer to some of our lists, listeners and watchers. Yeah. So I'm gonna try to figure this out because I'm not a Swift expert. Is Absolutely. A, is, is a protocol an interface in C Sharp and a struct a class or no? Well, a protocol is more or less an interface. A struct is a struct. Oh, a struct is a struct. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. That makes sense. So not a class. Okay, gotcha. Right. That makes sense. I, I could have done them as classes, but I chose not to. Okay, perfect. That's awesome. Okay, awesome. And I do like this. Now, I would say I would put turkey on sourdough. That's just me. I don't just blame me. you. Okay. I, I don't blame you. Um, but let me show you, I've already run the, uh, binding tools for Swift on this. Um, but let me show you what the, what the result is with, uh, a little bit of sample code that I wrote. So I'm just going to pop it up in an editor here. So very, very simple. Here's your main, um, that, that function print sandwich ends up in a class called top level entities. And I just say print sandwich with a new rye and a new ham. And those are the types surfaced from Swift. There they are. It looks like C-sharp. Um, and I have this compiled already, so I can run it with mono. And when you run it, it prints ham on rye, which mm. is exactly what you expect. But the thing is, like you said, you prefer something else on your sandwich. And, and like I said, I don't blame you. Um, I, don't, I don't always want ham on rye. Um, 
so what I've done is I've got another version of this here. And here in C Sharp, I've implemented this. So we go down a little bit. There's a class called whole wheat instead of a struct. And it implements the interface iBread, which maps onto the bread protocol. And in this case, the name for it is whole wheat. Uh, I've implemented a fill filling, which is sharp cheddar. And then I've uh, changed the, the main here to print a sandwich that's uh, sharp cheddar on whole wheat. Uh, I approve of the sandwich, by the way. This is a great sandwich. Thank you. I'm, I'm into it in general. Now, now these iBreads and Swift string, are you going to get to that? Because those those aren't the same as what we saw before, right? Right. So the string type in Swift, I've surfaced in C Sharp as Swift string. Mm -hmm. um, I had a choice as to whether I should surface it as is or whether I should, should hide it behind a string and let you have the illusion that it's really a string. Um, but since some work has to happen when you go from a C sharp string to a Swift string, I decided that it'd be better to have the the actual type. You know, that was my decision. Maybe I'll I'll change that decision. Gotcha. Not really sure at this point. But uh, effectively, we just make a new a new Swift string out of a C sharp string. Gotcha. Um, any other questions before we compile this and run it? No, this looks good to me. All right. So we'll quit this. I'll do a quick make here, uh, which just recompiles that top level code. And then um, I'll rerun it. And then surprise, surprise, it says sharp cheddar on whole wheat. What I want to highlight here is the code that's actually printing that is in Swift. OK, we haven't, this is not happening in C sharp. What we've done is we're passing in objects that, um, from Swift's point of view, they're Swift objects, but really they end up bouncing around through uh, something like a trampoline to end up in C sharp to get sharp cheddar and to get whole wheat in there. But it's really the Swift code that's running when it, which prints that out. So uh, if I go back to the the Swift implementation, print sandwich is a regular Swift print statement. And it says, we'll print the name element of with and the uh, name element of of. So it, it just plain works as is. Yeah, it's not like it's it's running C sharp code. It's literally sort of. Oh, I almost is it similar like maybe like p invoking in in a way. It's a very high level way of maybe saying it. Kind of. It well, it is p invoking into Swift, and Swift is in. It, when when we call that uh, print sandwich from C sharp, we are p invoking into Swift. And Swift is kind of doing the reverse to get back into C Sharp. So we have a way of making proxy types for you that can act like an implementation of the protocol. And those vector back into C Sharp and then um, make all the things happen. From Swift's point of view, you're just giving it a, a bread and a filling, and it works with it. From C Sharp's point of view, you're working with iBread and iFilling, and so you're comfortable in the C Sharp land, and Swift is comfortable in the Swift land, and I handle the translations between the two. Got it. Now, you are running this here directly from VI, right? And you were running it with Mono, and you had run some tools ahead of time. How did you get it from Swift into those C Sharp classes and representations like because that's what you know it was it was it that you need the source code or was it a magical archive file or how did that work okay um let me go back to to sharing my screen for a sec because i'll i'll show some of the stuff behind the curtain so i'm i'm not going to uh i'm not going to to run binding tools for swift because that's who who likes watching a compiler run? Um, because the, the this the work has already been done. Gotcha. What what I do is I do two levels of analysis on the output of um, the Swift compiler. So I have written code that can do effectively reflection on a Swift module that has been compiled. So mm -hmm. I go through it and start digging through and find all the types and then figure out how to represent them in C sharp. So what I have here. Um, is I'm going to pull up the uh, the implementation of of iBread um, because I'm crazy that way. So this is what the binding tools for Swift generated for you. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. So if we go down a little bit, um, here's the interface, the you know, public interface iBread um, with a with a get only 
property for the name and get only for sliced. But there's an attribute on top and that says, oh, this is a protocol. Oh, and by the way, uh, you need this uh, Xamarin proxy whenever you wanna use this in place of a Swift implementation. And here's the type that we use. Um, there's a library name, which is where the binding actually lives. Mm -hmm. And then some other metadata stuff. And then another attribute that says, oh, and by the way, this is the full class name uh, or fully qualified name of this type as it exists in Swift. Because not every name in a Swift type can live in a C-sharp type comfortably. Um, for example, Swift allows you to use um, emoji for identifiers. Oh, and cool. C-sharp support is, no, it's not cool. <laughs> it is cool. I'm like, that's awesome. Like, I want that. Steve, you made that work, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Except that, uh, you know, if you use the clown emoji, I think it, it substitutes the word clown for it to, to make it work. Um, <laughs> so going down a little further, there is a, uh, a proxy for, um, for bread. And again, all of this is automatically written by binding tools for Swift. This was not yeah. done by a human being. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of things that happen, but one of the constructors, I'm going to show off here is um, takes an iBread, which is the actual implementation, um, and a thing called every protocol, which is a representation in Swift of anything that can, any and every protocol that can be implemented. And uh, what I do is I keep a hold of the actual implementation and I make a thing called an existential container, which holds on to the every protocol and the, the implementation of all of this. So what ends up happening is Swift will call a function pointer, which goes into C sharp, C sharp receives that function call, converts arguments around, and then calls the actual C sharp implementation that it keeps under the hood. Hmm. So this, you'll see that this bread uh, Zam proxy implements iBread. So it is in fact itself iBread. Yeah. And so it serves dual purposes. It can act as uh, a C sharp bread from the Swift point of view, or it can act as a Swift bread from the C sharp point of view. So if we get an I, if we get an, a, a bread protocol from Swift that we don't know anything about, and that can happen. Um, what we do is we just hide it in one of these and C-sharp just sees iBread. Okay, great. We'll treat it as iBread. Hmm. Fascinating. How does garbage collection work with this since there are sort of, you know, this proxy in there? Does it does the code generated sort of handle the disposing of it magically for us? Is it something that we need to take into consideration? I'm getting a little deep, but I know that, you know, if, if individuals have been in the Xamarin world and done some low level coding, you know, thinking about where objects are in the state of a, a view right. controller can be a little tricky. Well, anything that is heap allocated in Swift uses um, their ARC automatic reference counting technology. Mm -hmm. And so they have rules for when acquire and release happens for each of the objects that go through. And we honor those rules. If you have anything that's heap allocated, uh, it is going to implement iDisposable. So on the C-sharp side, um, we'll make sure that when you've done a dispose, we're all done with that, and it will do a release. Oh, very cool. That's awesome. I love that. I make it easy. And I like that all that code is generated. And I just use some bread as I would, because you know there's all sorts of breads that you could implement, lots of breads. <laughs> Absolutely. And the, the other thing that you can think about here is that I I have those types now in in C sharp, so I don't even have to call um, you know print sandwich like I had done before. I could just now implement it in C sharp and just use i bread and i filling however I want. Oh yeah, exactly. You could create your own two strings. You could create your own methods. Right, you can do whatever you want, basically, right? Right. So if you have uh, say a machine learning library that is um, written in Swift, uh, why shouldn't you be able to access it from C sharp? Yeah, I agree. So now you can kind of do these things. And, and of course, you know, you, you said you ran the tools ahead of time. So I'll put links to the show notes, to the sample code, but also to all the documentation, right? Absolutely. Out there for people to use. Yeah. And it's uh, right now it's in, it's pre-release, it's open source. And mm -hmm. so if you want to hack on it, uh, it is available today. Awesome. Is there anything else you wanted to show off, Steve? This is awesome. This is what I had in mind. Um,
And just what I had prepared, so. I love it. I'm going to go buy some Swift today. In fact, I know quite a few people that will be very, very happy to see this in action. And and um, I do love this sample. Sometimes we we see these crazy complex this, this, and this, but this is very, so the point is very realistic. You got some classes, you got some data, you got it from a dialib or maybe from an archive, and then boom, and you can pull it in. Steve, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for showing it off. I really appreciate it. Yeah. You know what? I'm happy to show my work. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you filled out that form and that you're here, and I'm sure everyone else is. In fact, if you have comments for Steve, you can leave them in the comments section below. We'll make sure we triage those, but also take a look down there for all the links, documentation, and the source code. But Steve, thank you again. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks again for everyone for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, ring that notification bell, and do all the things that you know you like to do. So till next time, this has been The Xamarin Show. I'm James. Thanks for watching. Hey, James here. Just wanted to check in and thank you for watching this video. Now do all the things that you know you want to do, such as like, subscribe, and ding that notification bell. Become part of the notification squad. While you're here, check out all these awesome videos that I've already recorded. Click on that thing. Click it. Watch it. Do it.